All right, welcome back to the channel, The Psychology of Deer. Uh, yeah, that's what this is. And these deer, they're just, I mean, they're not even worried about golf. They're just eating. I mean, it's lunchtime, you know, and they're, they're not worried about the fact that they ate the same thing for breakfast that they're eating for lunch. This is, this is just delicious stuff. Okay, well, where are we? <laughs> what are we doing here? This is actually The Psychology of Golf. Dr. Mark Piotten, back with you. Uh, and this time uh, we're coming from Chevy Chase Country Club, where there are indeed deer uh, hanging out uh, at a specific point in the golf course, which I will show you later. Um, and they're just hungry. They're not worried about golf, and they're not worried about the golfers walking through. Uh, Chevy Chase Country Club is in a cool location here, uh, right behind uh, Glendale and uh, Pasadena. Um, if you go kind of just over the hill to the east, you're at the Rose Bowl. And this uh, location is, is very uh, hidden, so you can't necessarily tell that Chevy Chase Country Club is back there because you kind of come around a curvy road through a neighborhood. If you go uh, just to the east, like over the hill, uh, you get to the Rose Bowl. And the Rose Bowl like feels like a city kind of setting uh, with the stadium there. Uh, this particular location does not feel like city at all. It feels like it's very um, uh, out of the way, like in the kind of like a little country setting in the middle of an urban area. So, very cool uh, place. Um, how did I get access to this place? Uh, well, I just emailed ahead, and this is how I've had success the last year or so getting onto a few golf courses that are not generally open to the public. I just email and I say, hey, I've got this YouTube channel. Uh, can I come film? And so in this case, Silvana, thank you so much for uh, accommodations. Chevy Chase Country Club is a nine hole course. Uh, here's the scorecard. And by the way, uh, I'm going to put a link down in the uh, description. Uh, this is where Colin Morikawa, uh, the professional uh, golfer from the area, uh, played a lot of his golf as a kid. So there's a, there's a video of him going around this course, reliving old times. I think he was a teenager playing here. So I tried to picture myself as Colin Morikawa going around this course, making birdies, hitting the ball 300 yards, and it didn't really work. But anyway, um, cool to, to kind of imagine a future pro uh, training here. And like I said, it's just nine holes. Um, the day that I was there, it was very uh, open. So it was really cool because you could just like play two golf balls or play the course twice. And in this case, I did play the course twice. Um, they let me, they invited me to do that. So, and then there was like, there was zero pace of play issue. Like I was by myself and going fast or slow, depending on what I wanted to do. So that was fantastic. Uh, the weather was very good. Uh, it was in the fall, October 23. The scorecard here shows you 2,600 yards, which if you play it twice, it's like 5,200 yards from the black tees, uh, in the back, which is not a long course, very short course. Um, but there's plenty of danger. I mean, a slope rating of 125 for a course of that yardage means that the narrowness of some of the fairways, the smallness of the greens, I mean, I'll show you this in a second. It's, it's going to be a, a little bit um, uh, scary. <laughs> so let me actually pause on that. Before I even start showing you the golf course and doing my usual uh, course management um, tips for golf course. Let me just talk about what happened. <laughs> okay. What happened? So they, like I said, they invited me to play the course twice. And in fact, on the sixth hole, there is a, uh, like there's an alternate green. So like if you play the back nine, play the, the course again as the back nine, you can actually hit to a different green, which is cool. So I got out there. Um, let's see, full disclosure, I had shot a record round for myself at Griffith Park like maybe a month or a month and a half before that. And so I was feeling very good about my golf game. Uh, but then I got sick, I got COVID. And so I was recovering from that, not playing very much, and just kind of grateful to be playing again once I was out there. So I hadn't really been practicing a lot. I didn't know exactly how it was going to go, but I wanted to honor the invitation. And, uh, and so here I was. And the front nine, the, I played nine holes. I was recording on video and I just was making double bogey, double bogey. And then I think I had a triple and I'm up about a seven handicap at this point. So double bogeys I can, I, I will make, but not 
three in a row, typically. <laughs> so I was shell-shocked by about the seventh hole. I was like, oh man, like I just recorded myself just having one of my just junkiest performances of the whole year. And so by the ninth hole, I was like, okay, wait a minute. They invited me to play this course twice. So I don't actually have to, uh, I, I, I could delete. I could just not pretend that that front nine never happened. And so I did. <laughs> At the end of nine holes, I was like, okay, what's the psychology going on here? I went through some stages of like, I don't know, like uh, fear, right? Like, oh my God, today's going to stink. And then a realization, okay, today stinks. And then, uh-oh, I'm on film and I'm st it stinks. And then, I mean, I'm trying to give the golf course credit. You know, like I said, you'll see. It's going to be very narrow at times, very challenging. There's a reason that probably that Colin Morikawa used this course when he was young to get really good. It's because it was challenging. There were a lot of different opportunities for um, uh, skill uh, development, I'm sure, for him. So I was trying to give the course credit, but I was, I was scared, and then I was panicked, and then I was in disbelief. And then I was bummed out. I mean, these are, they talk about stages of grief in psychology. I was going through stages of grief. So I got to the ninth hole and I'm like, well, I got a chance to play this over again. And I really just need to film once for, for YouTube. Like I need to show you all the course. I don't need to show it to you twice. I, I intended to, <laughs> especially because the one hole has the two different greens and it's kind of different. But for my own psychology, I needed to erase as much of what happened as I could and focus on playing again and, and doing better. So at the end of nine holes, I deleted, I didn't have to do it. I, I could delete later, but I deleted all of the videos. I threw away the scorecard. I got a new scorecard and I just started fresh. And that was like the, sometimes when you're, when you're trying to recover from a bad performance or when you're in the middle of a bad performance, some sort of symbolic act can really help. So the famous psychologist Ken Revisa from, from Cal State Fullerton, he recommended having a, to his, he worked with baseball players a lot, he recommended having an invisible toilet on your belt. And if you, if you struck out or if you did something poorly on the baseball field, just take the, the little lever, the imaginary lever, and flush the toilet, flush that stuff down the drain. So that's like a symbolic act to, to get you to forgetting about this performance, this, this, um, these mistakes that you made. So that's essentially what I did by deleting the videos and throwing away the scorecard. <laughs> and so here I am starting fresh again on the course. And my feeling is, I mean, you can't, you can't literally, I mean, you, the flushing, the, the, you, you can't escape it. It just happened. It's in your memory bank and it's recent memory. Your most recent golf performance was terrible. So it's not like, oh, I'm a new person. I'm just going to completely forget about that. Amnesia time. You can't do that. You're a human, right? So you, it, it, oftentimes it takes like, you have to work through it. You have to kind of be kind to yourself and think, okay, I'm coming back here. Think positive. The comeback is underway, but it's not going to be perfect. And so let's see the comeback when it's not perfect. So here we go. <laughs> let's check out hole number one. Given that this was actually hole number 10 for me, uh, hole number one is, is uh, I mean, I don't want to say iconic hole, but it's, it's one that you, you, you see Colin Morikawa talking about in, in his video on this course because there's this row of trees going along the right side um, of the first fairway here. And it's a unique look and it's a very narrow fairway. So I gave it a fun rating of three because... Besides the row of trees, it's pretty straightforward uphill par five. It's only 425 yards. It just requires accuracy. And since it's uphill, you, even if you're a big hitter, you're not necessarily going to get there um, in two shots the way you think you might. So handicap three, pretty, um, pretty strong. These handicap ratings are based on nine holes. Uh, so are my fun and fear ratings based on nine holes. So this one is, is a lot of fun for the look of it and for the uniqueness of it and for the excitement of getting out there. On the first hole, fun rating four, also pretty strong just because it's so narrow. So here I am trying to shake off, I mean, literally, literally shake off what just happened and have a new start here. And it's not gonna go perfectly. I mean, it was such a nice setting, man. 
back in the trees. Beautiful day. I couldn't help but enjoy it. It was very quiet. And I just hit the ball into the trees on the left side. So this is not going perfectly to start. I'm waiting for like a break. I'm waiting to get like a, like something to get me back on track. And then like, I mean, I'm trying to, I'm trying to believe in that comeback. I'm trying to, to work through it here um, and act like it's just a new day, but I'm off behind the trees and then I try to punch out and I clipped a little bit of grass. <laughs> so I'm still stuck here. This is shot number three and I'm on these wood chips. These wood chips are, are I mean, it's playable. Ah, struggles. Okay, so I actually got it clean there with my, my old fashioned two iron there and I hit it about 200 yards up the fairway. So that one actually really helped. And that might have kick-started uh, the beginning of a few better shots for me. So now I'm only about uh, 60 yards out, I think, uphill. On the right side of this green, there's a steep drop-off. And the left side, there's a bunker. So there's really no forgiveness. So I'm just trying to aim, aim for the center of the green. And I got it. I got the center of the green. I'm like, whoa, center of the green. This is, this is different. I actually have a putt for par. You know, like as a seven handicap at this point, I'm trying to alternate between pars and bogeys, but like sometimes a bogey is just a relief. Like it's not a double. <laughs> That's my, my par putt. And then I'm like, okay, I think I can make this one. Ooh, okay, a bogey. What a relief. Okay, <laughs> just take what you can get, you know? If you're trying to come out of, of a difficult, bad performance, you shouldn't expect to make birdies to like make it up. You know what I mean? Like you make three double bogeys in a row. For me, that's a mis that's a disaster. Theoretically, I to get my score back on track, I need to make three birdies in a row to counteract the three double bogeys. But that's just not real life. Like I just got to try to make bogeys first, and then maybe try to get back to pars. You know, it's like I need to take it gradually here. So hole two. It's another par five, and theoretically another opportunity here for uh, a decent score. Um, so we have two short par fives to start out. That's unique. This course is unique in a lot of ways, um, and that's one of them. Uh, so 433 yard par five, what? That's really short, but there's this dog leg to the right, and it really cuts you off. So like your tee shot, as you'll see here, like I had a pretty good drive, and I'm, I can't uh, like I have to go over a massive tree in order to, like a forest is in the way in between me and the, and the green. So like it's not a two shot hole for me, even though it's only 433 yards. And I drive the ball 250, 260 probably downhill here. So fun rating two with the dog leg to the right and the variety here. There's a lot to look at. It's a nice looking hole. Uh, fear rating three because on the right there's this forest that I'm talking about. So let's check it out. Uh, you've got a forest on the right. I say forest. It's a grove of trees. There's not like forest surrounding this course, but it is. There, there are trees and there is wilderness. The left side is the row of trees that I was just behind with the wood chips and everything next to hole number one. So you don't want to go left, but you'd rather go left than right here. And I'm just hoping to hit it straight. And I did. I finally hit a straight drive. I think this was probably my best drive of the day to this point. This was, like I said, my 11th hole of the day and not my second. Woohoo, okay, I'm in the fairway and I hit it strong. But off to the right here, I can't cut the, it's, it's like, I don't know, 200 yards to the green, but I can't cut it because there's these trees that are like really tall and there's a lot of them. So it's almost like, I mean, I'm just hitting a little pitch here to get forward 100 more yards so that I can hit into the green. Um, it's almost like even, okay, so like for me with my driver, I actually hit my driver as straight typically as I do sometimes my two iron or my uh, three wood. So like I usually hit driver no matter what um, on, these, on these par fours and par fives, even if I don't need to. But like realistically on this hole, there's really no advantage. Like if you're out there 250 versus 200, like there's really no advantage. So this is like an iron hole, a three shot par five, even though, like I said, it's only 400 and something yards. So now I've hit a few, a couple of good shots in a row. I hit a good drive and I hit a, a good little pitch there. And here's the look at the green. You got to clear this, um, this uh, ditch, which I think is still playable down there, but, um, but you got to get over it. You got to clear it. 
a forced carry. The green is fairly large and I finally have a green in regulation. I think it was my first one of the day. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and a birdie putt. Wow. Okay, so now I'm like, all right, maybe some of those uh, horrendous memories from playing this course the first time, maybe, maybe they're starting to fade a little bit, right? You can't expect them to go away, but you just have it's maybe a little bit of a fade here. And I'm really going for it for birdie. This is a downhill putt. And really, I was just hoping to make par. <laughs> so now, now I'm like, okay, this is a short putt, but I got to take a second. It would be my first par of the day, ladies and gentlemen, which isn't a big deal if it's the second hole. But this was my 11th hole, first par of the day. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Now I'm like, all right, maybe I can film this day. Maybe I can get some of this on video and not. You know, theoretically, I could have been putting more pressure on myself by doing this because now I have to film the second nine holes. Like I don't have a choice, right? <laughs> but it was better because like I was trying to delete and erase those first nine. That The act of doing that I think helped me out a little bit and reduced pressure or at least reduced the, the memories of clunking my way around the front nine. So let's, let's put that memory aside now. We're on to par uh, hole three, par three. 176 yards. These again, these distances are from the black tees, so I played from the back. Um, if you play this course twice, like I like I actually I, I could have, you could play the black from the on the front nine and then the blue on the second or something like that. But it's not a long course, like I said. Hole number three is fun rating nine for me, the least fun hole on the golf course. All of these holes are unique, <laughs> and all of these holes are are fun. Uh, it's, it's a great place to be, like I said, the setting, very quiet and everything. So there are no un, unfun, uh, non-fun holes on this course. But this one, I guess, just stood out the least to me. There's a little bit of a fear rating, though, six, so let's check it out. This is a downhill uh, par three of a little bit of distance. And off to the left, so the, the, the green is down there to the left. I couldn't put the camera in a great spot here because there's a hill, a pretty big hill right behind with the houses there. So I didn't have a lot of room to put the, the tripod in this case, but I'm aiming for that green down on the left side. If you go left of the green, you, I believe, have some hazard to deal with. And right of the green, there's a bunker. So there's a little bit of danger. The green is fairly large though, and I almost got it up there with my five iron. I mishit it slightly and ended up a little short. I think I was over hitting my five iron on that swing. So anyway, again, like at this point, I'm just kind of happy to be out of big trouble. Um, and I'm gonna try to chip up here for birdie or to get it close for par. And I did, that was a good chip. That was a good chip. Am I gonna make my second par of the day and have it be two in a row? Well, this is not a gimme. It's, uh, it's not a long putt, but it's not a gimme. Uh, I'm not sure I wanna watch this one. Oh, I pushed it right. Sad. Okay. Well, still a good hole at this point. Bogeys are success, given my uh, previous follies uh, on this course. Okay, so to get to the fourth hole, you take the, the the walk or the golf cart past the clubhouse, and you're sort of like in the back, or I guess that would be the front corner by the parking lot and next to the road. Um, so there's a little bit of a... Of a of distance from the third hole to the fourth hole. The, the clubhouse is, is small, but it's very nice. They have a um, dining area and stuff. Um, and there was nobody there. This was a weekday, so there was nobody there. <laughs> it seemed like I had the place to myself just about. So walking by, also very peaceful. They have a little putting green, no driving range, uh, but they have a, a hitting net. You can hit it to a net. So anyway, you pass all of that and then you get to hole four, which compared to the others is, is um, Pretty uh, straightforward, 350-yard um, par four, at least in terms of distance. I call it a birdie hole because there's some variety here, and the fear rating is not doesn't quite match up to the fun. This is a little bit more like just uh, hit the ball as hard as you can and enjoy what it looks like. So you've got the trees there on the left, the palm trees, but they're not too close. And what happens is if you hit it to the right, there's a hill that helps you out. And this is what happened for me here because I I don't know if I intentionally faded it here toward the right or not, but I cleared that, that initial tree 
and then I kind of rolled up the hill and then it kind of curled back down. So I was like, that's cool because it saved me, it helped me out. If you go left, I don't think you have that kind of relief. Um, so I would say favor the right side here. And then you kind of, this was a blind shot going in. I mean, the, the area around the green, I was kind of looking ahead there. The area around the green, there is a little bit of space. Um, so not like a super tight approach shot in that sense, but you got to clear this hill, it's uh, up and over. And so I, I, I mean, the blind shot, you just have to pick a target and then go for it. And so that's what I did. And then I, I think I pushed it a little bit right here, but overall it wasn't bad. And yeah, they just, this is like freshly cut grass with the, the shavings there, the, the grass, uh, still on there and, uh, kind of smelled good. I don't know. This is a lot of. A lot of good uh, senses here with the sunshine and the quiet and the birds chirping and there you're gonna see the deer here in a minute. This was a good chip. I wanted it to slow down and it did. And so this is another putt just like the last hole where I'm like, okay, it's not a gimme, but it's not real long either. So by the way, if you see me uh, kind of walking around like this. I try to feel the break a little bit with my feet because I realized over time that I couldn't trust my eyes always. And of course, I'm not good enough to have a caddy with me. So <laughs> anyway, whatever works for you for reading the break, stick with it. And that, that worked for me there. A par, two pars and out of four holes. Okay, I'm doing well. This is a good back nine. I'm glad I, at this point, I'm like, I'm so glad I deleted those earlier videos. All right, well, so I'm doing well, I say, but then we've arrived at hole number five, which is fear rating one, the most scary hole in the golf course. I don't know if it really is. This is all based on first and maybe second impression, but like it was for me because like on this, on the, on this front nine that you didn't see, <laughs> I hit the ball in the bunker and then there's just, I mean, let's take a look. So you've got this par three and it's 200 yards from the back here. And I mean, the green is there. Oh man, there's like a huge bunker on the left and then another bunker on the right. And then you can't go long because if you go long, you're in these bushes or like there's the road back there. So there's no safe play. Like that's why I gave it fear rating one is because there's, I mean, you could lay up. The only safe play is to lay up to 180 yards and then hit a 20 yard pitch over the bunker. Otherwise, you're, you're aiming at this green that is well protected on all sides and you're doing it from, a, from distance. So I'm hitting a three wood here. I hit a three wood the first time and I went in the bunker. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna aim a little bit right and try to go on the other side. And then I drew it perfect. It was a good shot actually. Like I would take that shot under normal circumstances, but it went back into the same bunker this bunker just tormented me on this particular day. Fear rating one just for this bunker alone. But you can see in the back there, there's not a lot of room. I, I would say long and right is the safe play here, but it's not that safe. When the safe play is not that safe, you know you have some, some challenge and, and your psychology is not good. Well, and then I kind of muffed the bunker shot there. I think I was in my head that I had already been in this bunker today. So then I was like, okay. I stink from this bunker. I, my confidence was at a low. Luckily, I was able to get out on the second one. <laughs> Otherwise, it would have been pure disaster. But now I've got a partial disaster here and a longer bogey putt. Uh, this hole got me. I mean, the, the, the healthy golfer, the psychologically healthy golfer would say, this hole got me, but I want to go back and do it again until I get it right. Right? Like, if you're... If you love the game, you appreciate these challenges. If you want to improve your skills, you appreciate these challenges. Um, yeah, this was actually a good putt, but I just barely missed it. So double bogey time, first one of the back nine for me. All right, on to hole number six. This is the one with two different greens and one tee box, two greens, one tee box. So you could play one on the front nine and then another on the back nine if you wanted. It's also good for, I mean, if nobody's out there and you have a membership, you can just practice, like stay at this place, practice all day on this location. I'm imagining Colin Morikawa doing that in the past. Lots of target practice, really good stuff. So anyway, I'm not sure the map, I think the map there is showing the green that I was hitting to. <laughs> 
uh, but I'm not actually, I think it was, but the other, the other one is sort of off to the right. Um, middle of the pack for fun, middle of the pack for fear rating here for me. Uh, it's another par three, it's shorter. Um, another well-protected green. So the safe play here is to the right. It kind of slopes from right to left. The left side is just like disaster because it would roll way down the hill or go into that tree or both. So I'm trying to go a little bit right here. Uh, and I didn't quite catch this clean, I don't think, but otherwise it was straight and it's a pretty good shot. I avoided the bunker and I'm just a little bit short, yeah. So I've kind of mishit a couple irons here on this nine and landed short, but I'm okay with that because, <laughs> again, avoiding major disaster at this point is, is the key. And then I'm hitting these short chips. This one came out pretty well, uh, but this putt was a little bit of a challenge. Um, nice setting again with the trees here and the shade and the sun combination. This whole, uh, this green has a lot of slope to it as I recall, from right to left. So you really do want to be on the right side if you can manage your tee shot over there, but then you're going to be left with some downhill stuff. And in this case, it's a side hill or a, a, a right to left curving putt. <clears throat> and like I said, if you have a little routine where you can, you can assess the break with your feet, with your eyes, with your friend, uh, by watching somebody else's putt, whatever works for you, stick with it. Um, I just kind of overdid the overcooked it a little bit, but that's a tough putt. So I'll take the bogey again. All right. Hole number seven, number one handicap, number one fun rating, fear number two. Okay. This is, this is quite the hole. So this is, I'm going to give, so I, I said like iconic would be overstating it a little bit for hole number one. It's definitely a distinctive look hole number one with the trees going up the right side. I'm giving this one the sign, my vote for signature hole uh, for this course though. Uh, hole number seven, because of the variety and because of the finishing, the, the look at the green at the finish. Uh, so let me show you all of this. So this is, you're kind of going back into the canyon. Is it a canyon? Yeah, it's a canyon. <laughs> uh, you're kind of going back into it. So it's a slight uphill, but you're, it's almost like you're going off into the forest or something like that. That's the feeling um, because this hole is surrounded by a hill on the right and trees on the left. Um, and like there's tr the, the houses that are kind of dotting the hills are a little bit um, back from this hole. So you're really feeling like you're isolated in nature. And I hit a good drive here. I started at left, which I did not mean to do, but it faded nicely back into the middle of the fairway. Thank goodness. Okay, now this one, this is like a super small target. This green, I mean, from, I guess, it's like a, I don't know, like an egg shape uh, green and it goes from back right to front left. And so the, the width of that egg is very thin and there's bunkers. And I'm just trying to like not hit it in a bunker. I, I don't even know if I can get it on the green because it's such a small target. But I, <laughs> that was like a, almost a sarcastic cheer because I did not go in a bunker. Um, but yeah, I mean, the look of this, this, this hole with the, with the, um, the small target and the trees all around and, and just like the, the quiet that is provided there. I, I give this one a signature hole and, and it's got the deer. These were the deer that we saw at the beginning of the video eating and not worried about me. They, the, I think they just live in this spot. Like they just hang out here cause there's some seclusion. And so that, I mean, it just seems like they're just there all day. Maybe not, but maybe they are anyway. I was excited because I didn't go in a bunker, but I actually didn't, I mean, I didn't go on the green either. You can see this is in the short rough and, or the fringe, and you can see the, the, the green there. It's just so small. The pin is placed in the back too. So there's like very little distance between like the fringe and the pin. So I hit a decent chip here, but I actually rolled all the way to the back fringe. And so now I've got a fairly short putt, but it's the fringe. It's on the fringe. Oh my gosh, such a small green. Anyway, so not an ideal chip, but also not a terrible one either, because again, the green's small. So if you like to, to aim at small targets, target golf, this is your hole, but also for the, the environment. Go in! Ah, oh, so close. All right, so I missed a couple putts um, at fairly short distance, or fairly um, small misses here, so I can't complain too much about my putting stroke on the back nine here. Hole number eight, so you're, you're back in the... Uh, 
like when you finish hole seven, you're back in the area where the deer are and there's like trees and quiet and stuff. And then hole eight, you kind of tee off from that location a little bit elevated. And then you come back down into the, the main area of the course uh, with the green. So a little bit of distance, 190 yards, although it is downhill. This one, fear rating seven, fun rating eight, like eh, not super distinct this, this hole compared to some of the others. It's a little bit like hole number three actually has some similarity uh, to that one because the hill's behind you and then you're kind of teeing off on a on a ledge there uh, with a nice view definitely nice view so the green is kind of like back behind my left shoulder there as I set up there's a bunker on the right and some trouble on the left uh, but the green is, is very like some of these greens are much larger than others and I think this one is 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 quite large especially compared to hole seven and so I'm excited because I think I got it on the green. And I did. I got it on the green with my five wood. And I've got a birdie putt. I mean, this is a big green, so it's a long birdie putt. But I'm excited for that. Any green in regulation on this course, with given the challenge, is a success for me on this day especially. You actually see, by the way, some other golfers back there. It's, it's, it was rare that I saw other human beings on this day. I almost had that line, but I didn't. It turned at the end. Close to a birdie, but settle for par. I will take it. Okay, hole number nine, the last hole. This one, fear rating nine, the least scary hole on the golf course. Maybe it was because I myself was feeling less afraid, having put together eight holes at plus six, and I was like, that's pretty good <laughs> for me, especially on this day. So maybe it was how I was feeling. Maybe it's, it's a fairway that has a little bit more size to it, especially as you get down closer to the green. I don't know, but... For whatever reason, I was not as scared by this hole as I was of all the others. Fun rating, six, sort of middle of the pack. This is like, so those trees that you saw in the first hole that I talked about having a distinct look on the row of trees, they were on the right side of the first hole looking one direction. Now we're looking the other direction going down the same row of trees. So here we are uh, with the ninth hole, which like I said, starts out narrow, but opens up a little bit toward the end. And I think it's less narrow than hole number one was. Um, at least visually, it did not look quite as scary. And like I said, I was finally feeling okay about my golf. So I, I was able to let out a little bit of um, club head speed here and hit a good drive. That one felt good. I was like, oh, I think I finally was able to put together a few good holes and we can save this video and not delete it. Ah, okay. <laughs> so I had conquered the... Uh, the challenge of trying to recover from dreadful golf. And uh, at this point, I wasn't playing my best of the year, but I was, I was, I was doing okay. This was about a 60 yard chip into the green. And with a sand wedge, I was able to hit the green. I don't think I hit the middle of the green, but yeah, I was there. So looking back at the clubhouse here, you can see the, uh, the putting practice putting green in the background. And there's like a two story clubhouse there with some, uh, like I said, a dining area, just really nice. Uh, setting really quiet and one more chance at a birdie my last chance at a birdie uh, for today uh, the ninth hole to go to plus five no no I just didn't have the line there um, but it was a decent lag putt and so I'm plus six for that nine holes I'll take it all right so uh Chevy Chase Country Club there you go thanks again to Silvana for the access for this particular day check out what Colin Morikawa has to say about the place I'll put that link down in the, in the description. Thank you again for watching uh, Psychology of Golf. This is going to be the last Psychology of Golf episode for 2023. More to come in 24, I hope. I'm scheming and trying to figure out where I'm going to go next and how and stuff. So any suggestions, any comments, uh, feel free to comment on the video. Subscribe, like the video, do all that stuff. And we'll see you in the next one.